If you're able to, would you like to stand, please? Would you like to sit down, please? A very warm welcome to you all to Haddon Hall Baptist Church. My name is Phil. I'm one of the ministers here. And a special welcome to family, friends, colleagues of Adeg Benley, Adeg Benro, or Benley, as he was known to all of the uh, Haddon Church members. On behalf of the family, I'd like to welcome you all to this service of remembrance and thanksgiving. We are here to honour Benley. We are here to consider his life and remember it in gratitude and to give thanks for all the memories we have of him. We'll have many different emotions as we go through this service. Sadness, grief, memories that suddenly come to mind and all of them are fitting for today. Benley was a disciple of Jesus and was glad to be known as a Christian. So listen to some words from the Bible. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we invite you to fill this room with the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Your love is stronger than death. You are the giver of hope. Fill us with peace in believing that our fears may cease, our loneliness eased, 
and our hope reawakened. We pray especially for the family and friends of Benley that you will be their great comforter now. Please, Lord, draw near to them and be everything they need today and in the days and weeks ahead. We pray that they will be aware of you with them as you have promised that you will never leave them or forsake them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're also welcoming on live stream people from different parts of the world and different countries. So a special welcome to those of you who are watching in other countries. You're very welcome as well. So Ben Lee was born on the 20th of April 1950 and grew up in a Jigbo in Osun State, Nigeria. He completed most of his primary and secondary education in his hometown and then moved to Ibadan, Nigeria to study medicine in 1971, graduating in 1976. He got married to Florence and they went on to have four children. Following graduation from medical school, Benley started his medical training in Nigeria, taking on various roles before moving to Dublin in Ireland in 1983 to complete specialist training in orthopedic surgery. He then started working as an orthopedic surgeon and was soon joined by his young family and moved to England a few years later. He eventually specialized as an accident and emergency consultant and took on various roles around the UK until his retirement in 2015, with his final role being at Broomfield Hospital in Chelmsford, Essex. Ben Lee's been a member of Haddon Hall Baptist Church for the 25 years, and I asked a few of the members of the church to write down their memories, and this is what some of them have said. Helen writes, Ben Lee was a quiet, gentle, and friendly person. He was very unassuming and respectful of everyone. When he asked how you were, you always felt that he really wanted to know. He was a sincere believer, always talked knowledgeably and wisely about faith and theology. He was a great contributor in Bible studies, but he didn't dominate the conversation in any way. He was very kind and supportive to one particular member of the church, and you could see what a great doctor he was by the way he would always take the time to really listen and see how he could help, often giving her a lift back home. I'd occasionally ask his advice about how to explain medical terminology in simple but accurate ways as part of my job, and he was always willing to help and discuss the issue. And Alison writes, I was in Haddon from 2007 and knew him as a steadfast, quietly supportive, modest church member. It was only during COVID and Haddon at home small group meetings that I learned he was a doctor. After he retired, he would still be on call. And one Sunday morning, after a hectic Saturday night at A&E around Christmas time, he was tired indeed, but still made it to church. He was faithful. And Jane and Joe write, he was always faithful in coming to church and felt it was important. Although during and after COVID, he became increasingly worried about catching COVID. During his times at Haddon, he would often be seen dozing in his car, following a night shift at the hospital and waiting for the gathering to begin. He was happy to lead a small group discussion during the gathering. He would often pick up Tox, one of our church members, in the morning and take her home. At Haddon at Home, the missional community that met in the lounge, Benley often read the reading, led prayers 
and sometimes led communion too, which I found very moving. And perhaps the person that was closest to Ben Lee was Tox. And I chatted to Tox a few weeks ago, and these are some of the things that she said. She started off by saying Ben Lee was a very private person, and there were a number of people who said the same thing to me. I remember meeting him 25 years ago. He was a very kind and thoughtful person. He would regularly pick me up for church and take me home afterwards. We would often sit in the car, chatting, reading the Bible, and praying together. He was a real support and encouragement. We shared some very deep and personal stories together, and he was always ready to listen and give brotherly support and love. I remember him coming to church straight from his hospital shift and seeing him asleep in his car outside church. He found dealing with COVID restrictions very challenging and would often join Zoom services streamed from a church in Nigeria. He did what he could in a godly way, and although private, he was a good man. I'm going to ask Sarah now if she will come and introduce our three readings, and then she's going to read from Matthew's Gospel. Um, hi everybody, um, my name is um, Sarah, or some people will know me as Aditon. Um, I just wanted to um, briefly just introduce um, why we picked the scriptures that we picked um, for this um, service. So one of my earliest memories of my father was doing um, fam uh, family Bible study and prayer together, basically. So um, we do that with my parents and siblings um, as a child every evening. Um, and what we do during that session is that we'd read the Bible and we'd study the Bible together. Um, we'd read a couple of psalms and then we'd have to each read our individual memory verses and we had to make sure we remembered it um, and then we'd um, then pray together you know um, every so often we change up what our memory verse is but I don't think my dad changed up that that often so um, yeah so the the, the, the three um, passages that we're going to read is my dad's um, particular memory verse and other psalms that we read together as a family growing up because that was one of the sort of um, you know, the highlights in my you know, memory as, as a child. So, um, um, so the one that I'm going to read is my, my father's personal memory verse, read in the King James Version. Uh, it's, it's funny, they ever, obviously, like, you know, it's been a number of years since I've lived with my parents, but every time I hear this verse in any setting in any church, it just reminds me of my dad in that particular King James Version. So that's why I'm going to read it. So it's taken from Matthew's Gospel, um, chapter 7, verses 7 to 11, and it reads... Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Amen. Thank you, Sarah. If you're able to, please stand for our first hymn, Abide With Me. Stay 
please take your seats. I'm going to now ask Jonathan if he will come and share some thoughts on behalf of the children. And then after that, Elizabeth will read our second reading from Psalm 23. Hello, everybody. How are you? It strikes me that this is the wrong part of the church for me to be standing in. Um, I've been coming here since I was 10 years old, and I've done everything in my power to be at the back and never stood up here speaking in front of people. So um, here I am. This is the best you're going to get for now. For those of you who don't know me, um, or have never met me or forgotten what I look like by now. Um, I have stopped growing, I confirm. Well, at least upwards, maybe outwards. I am Jonathan, the youngest of my father's four children. Um, although some of you know me by another name, but um, you can use that as well. Hopefully, as long as it's not rude, that's fine with me. On behalf of my immediate family, Benjamin, Sarah, Elizabeth, and Florence, as well as my extended family, many of which, in fact, probably most of which can't be here today, um, although they're going to be watching on the live stream, um, and my ex church family, we would like to thank you for coming here and paying tribute to my late father. As most of you know by now, my father passed away late October of last year, 2023. We apologize this gathering could not happen sooner due to extensive dialogue with the coroner's office and an ongoing inquiry. Nevertheless, thank you once more sincerely from the bottom of my heart and my dad's heart for being here. Our father was in hospital for some time prior to his death due to stomach cancer. His children rallied around him as did his wider family, as did his friends, as did his church family, supporting him in prayer whilst he was on his bedside. This period was com a complicated admission and we fought very hard to save his life, going to very extraordinary lengths to do so, but it was not to be. As per his wishes, we are seeking to do him justice in the aftermath of these events. Thank you all sincerely for your fervent prayers at that time. Although his time was cut short, we would like to celebrate his life and we would like you to do so with us. Our father was a migrant doctor who had given the vast majority of his career and life's work to the NHS all over the British Isles to our knowledge, numerous hospitals and clinics. We have some of those people here today. Thank you for joining us. To my father, I am very sorry. I did not do more for you while I could and could not prevent the outcome. However, as God has called you home, I will make my peace and we will make our peace. John chapter 14, verse 27. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. In circa 1979, Ibadan, Nigeria, a place which is mildly warmer than London, a nurse in need of some medical assistance saw a doctor for her medical center. A young, Al Green looking, healthy haired, head of haired, junior doctor answered the call. He offered his time and his services to the woman which were duly accepted. However, the doctor would not receive any payment and refused to see, receive any in exchange for these services. She insisted on sending him bags of food by way of appreciation, which he no less appreciated and enjoyed. The young doctor was, of course, my father, the nurse, our spiritual, beloved grandmother, 
Grandma Abajigi, she's here today. She has been like a mother to our parents and a grandmother to us throughout our lives. And for that, we are eternally grateful to you, Grandma. Our father was a studious, hardworking, diligent, humble, strong-willed, and somewhat reserved man, and as a few people have said already, a private man. He cared very, very deeply about propriety, education, discipline, efficiency, and morality. It has taken some time to come to terms with the idea that he did not fit perfectly in the box I'd created for him over the years. I seem to have learned more about him in the second half of my life than the first half of my life. Mainly from people telling me how much he helped them in their time of need, and I am still learning about who he was to a degree, as some of you may also be. I did not share his love for black eyed peas. <laughs> Unfortunately for my twin brother and I, black eyed peas to Nigerians are the magical fuel of twins. <laughs> and yes, we are twins. And yes, I am Jonathan, I said that in the beginning. One cannot grow, see, speak, or walk without the magical fuel of twins, or live to see 18 years old. He watched very carefully as I forced the black-eyed peas down my throat until I was old enough to suggest eating something perhaps edible. <laughs> Our dad was not really given to extended periods of sedentary time watching the TV. However, he enjoyed watching the news. He enjoyed the news at 10. He enjoyed the news at 5. <laughs> he enjoyed the news at 6, at 7, at 8, at 9, and a repeat of the news at 10, at 11, which was just the same news as all the other news before. Our father always taught us the value of a pound. We have memories of him making us a second cup of tea with the same bag of tea from the first cup as we, when we were kids, with the second cup of tea only tasting marginally better than hot, milky water. And yes, it did really taste that awful. However, what we may have thought frugal at the time was a subtle life lesson in learning to make the best of what you have. Our father had a way of walking across a room in perfect silence before clearing his throat <coughs> and signaling his presence. In the middle of me doing something inevitably I wasn't supposed to be doing. Our father enjoyed watching sports such as snooker and the occasional football game, especially the big tournaments. My brother recalls a time our father took us to watch the AFCON game at his friend's house, Nigeria versus Ghana. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, this made us very aware of his regard for Nigeria and love for football. He also enjoyed snooker. We think, this, we think that this gave him a sense of calm and peace to watch. Somewhat like snooker, our father was a strategic, measured man. Perhaps that's also why he liked like lights, James Bond movies, we don't really know. Like the rest of my family, he believed in helping the less fortunate and those in need. He helped his family back in Nigeria extensively, as well as his family and his friends, his, and his friends of friends in their times of need, not least financially. Our father had a very astute eye for detail. He could recall facts, dates, and detail many decades after events had occurred. I don't share my father's ability to remember or relay such detail, but I did share my father's inclination towards storytelling. Our father had a habit of answering a question with a very, very long, detailed story. Um, it must be the Nigerian in him. I would often have no idea whether within the story lay an answer to my actual question. 
So with time, I learned to focus my attention and to maybe zone out a little bit to the rest of it. Heaven help me. Dad was a man of God. He liked to pray. He liked to pray often. He would read the Bible and pray often. He would pray with me. He would pray for me. He would pray over me. Like any good Nigerian, it is easy to remember him starting a prayer and a little less easy to remember him ending the prayer. Um, Nigerians, please forgive me. This is a place of forgiveness, of course. For reasons I haven't entirely nailed down, one particular part of his prayer over me struck me in my adulthood. I would be paraphrasing, but it was something along the lines of, you are the Lord's and your life is no accident, son. I have had many conversations with people over the years explaining why I am who I am, why are we here, why faith, why God, why this, why that. I've often found myself returning to that part of my father's prayer, particularly with people struggling to grasp the nature of purpose. Your life is no accident, I would say. I also hoped in time that I would be able to say, you are the Lord's. So from our father to us, to you, you are the Lord's and your life is no accident. Father, rest in peace. Thank you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm one of Dad's children. Um, Sarah mentioned earlier on that Dad used to like very particular passages in the Bible. We would read them ad nauseum over the years, and it gives us comfort now to even read those things. Um, one particular one, I think most people here can probably read it of heart, is Psalm 23. And I am going to read it in the King James Version as Dad read it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to read it in the King James Version as Dad read it, as Dad would have read it. So he would have said something like, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan and Elizabeth, so much. If you'd like to stand for our second hymn, It Is Well With My Soul.
Please take your seats, thank you. I'm now going to ask Dr. Titus Odedin to come and share some words with us. Thank you very much. And thanks to everybody who has come here today to give their respect uh, as we celebrate the life of Benley. Um, it sounds oxymoronic when I say I'm deeply saddened when we are celebrating Benley's life. But that, however, is the truth. For Benley, who I have known for over 30 years, is exemplary as a Christian. For, and he led a life every Christian should aspire to follow. As um, Ken just said earlier on about fear, Ken Benley had no fear because he's a child of the living God. Indeed, I think it's, um, if I remember correctly, talking about death and fear, it's um, that man from Straight Stratford upon Avon William Shakespeare, who said, cowards die many times before their death. But the valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders I yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear. Because seeing death a necessary end, it will come when it will come. Yes, we are sad, but we, at the same time, we rejoice in the Lord. Benle was born, as he said, in Ejibo, in Ocean State. Just as it so happened, I was born just a few miles in Odeumu, about a year after that, in, also in Ocean State. Um, but I came here for my A-levels, etc., cetera, um, in university. And so I didn't meet Benle until he came back from Dublin to the UK, and he was just trying to, as we all do, find his way. Uh, and I had just moved as a consultant from Stockmandeville to Southport. Uh, and I invited him to come over uh, so that we can discuss careers. And he's a very brilliant, brilliant man. He worked with me for six months, and that's how he came into emergency medicine. And the nurses had great things to say about him. Who is this man? He's always there, he's always helpful, always advising 
medical students who we have to have as part of the job, always willing to teach and impart knowledge. And, um, and I followed him up after that and, you know, um, assisted as little as I could when he moved into Broomfield. And as it so happened, I have a, a small estate in Broomfield, just about a mile from his hospital. And Ibuka has been there, and he came to see me. Uh, and we, we talk about football, as you say. You know, we watch football, but we have a snooker table as well. We had great comrades, uh, comradeship together. And, and, but it always struck me, what an honest man, what a God-fearing man, Bailey, I've always been from the day I knew him. Even my state manager commented, who is this man? You know, he's always talking about God, always talking about God, always inspiring people to believe, you know. And that has struck with me till today. Um, I was deeply saddened about the manner in which he, he, he departed from the world. Uh, 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 and maybe as a medic, I shouldn't say too much, but anybody, we all know um, what goes on with the NHS, which is a gift to this country since it was invented in 1948. But over the years, because of pressure, because of very little uh, government finance, uh, things have deteriorated in the NHS. I'm sad, deeply saddened, that a colleague, a colleague, a senior colleague, should have had the treatment that he had. When, before I became consultant, when a nurse comes into hospital, the most senior person operates on, on a nurse, never mind a doctor, never mind a senior doctor. But this is the sad scenario we have today in the NHS, and I hope somehow God work miracles, that God will work a miracle on our NHS, because it's the best thing we have. Um, but so much so about the NHS. So I, 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 I really come here for us to give to pay tribute to a great man. It is honesty, the degree of his honesty is immense. So much so if I can tell you a very small example of there was a time, we all of us from time to time do have what we call cash flow difficulties. And Greenlee came to me and said, Wally, look, uh, I need a few pounds here because we have mortgages, electricity, this and that. And I said, oh, it's infant, that's nothing. And I completely forgot about this because Bailey is such a close friend. Do you know what happened? A few years later, Greenlee came to me and said, Wally, can you give me your bank details? I said, for what? He said, don't you remember? I said, remember what? that you gave me assistance a few years ago. He said, if you've forgotten, I haven't. I nearly cried. I said, well, well if I really forget about that. He said, no, I'm not. And he took my bank details and paid every penny of it back. Hello, <laughs> you, know, you know, what else can you say about a man who does that? So I can go on and on, but I want you all to know that we are celebrating the life of an exemplary Christian gentleman. You know, if we use that gentle word in, in English language, he exemplifies it. So um, you, we, we, I thank you all for all the support you're given to the family and the church where he's been for almost a quarter of a century or more. All the assistance you've given him, the spiritual assistance you've given him. 
And, well, Benle is not here, but as Christians, we believe that he's with the Lord. And this life, as the psalm, in the book of Psalms says, this life is a gateway between this life and the other life where we go into the bosom of our Lord, who has died for our sins. Uh, and he is in a better place now. So to Benle, I say, it is well with your soul. It is well with our souls. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Titus, for sharing those thoughts. And now I'm going to ask Benjamin to read for us. And then after Benjamin has read, we will sing our third hymn. Benjamin. Hi. Um, hi. Um, as many of you may know me, I'm Benjamin. Um, some people might know me as Taiwa. Uh, um, uh, officially, um, some people may say I'm the youngest um, because I do have the suspicion that, you know, the second one actually pushes out the first one first. But what did, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure some of you might know that one. Oh, okay. uh, so I'm going to be reading Psalms 24 uh, from the new, from the King James Version. Um, this was a verse that we would read as kids um, together um, uh, every day, really. So we'd, uh, we'd, we would always read this together. So um, that's the version I'm going to read. Uh, all right, so it's. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall stand in the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob's sailor. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall, shall come into his house. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, Ye everlasting doors, and the kingdom of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. We're going to sing another hymn now, a wonderful hymn of worship to God. How great thou art. So if you're able to, please stand. And then after the hymn, Sarah will share some thoughts with us on behalf of the children. Oh, my God, when I'm 
shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art how great thou art how great thou art Um, so this next tribute I'm reading on behalf of uh, my father's siblings um, and also my father's extended family. Um, so my father's siblings, um, my uncle Adiremi, my uncle Gwenga, my aunt Grace, uh, my aunt Moyi who's been able to join us today with her husband, my uncle David and my aunt Abigail and all of my um, father's extended family, um, both here and abroad. Um, like um, um, King did previously mentioned, a lot of them couldn't join us today, but they're um, watching via the live stream and they would have been here if they could have been. Um, I'd firstly like to thank um, them all for their um, fervent prayers during that, at the time our father was in hospital. You know, when we got the faithful call that he'd been, you know, moved to iron um, to, um, the intensive care unit and it wasn't looking good um, for him our family my um, father's extended family they contacted us and you know they formed you know a prayer group and they were praying for him fervently every night and you know for that we'll always be grateful um and then um so like i said although they were not physically um, with us during my father's final week um you know my father's extended family and you know um like um, jonathan said many um, of our you know family here and friends just helped upheld my father in, in constant prayer. Um, so as an extension of the love that my um, father's um, siblings um, felt for him, um, they've all sent extensive tributes celebrating my father's life. Um, I've um, written out their, their tributes. There's a tribute area in the reception area after the service, and you can read their tributes in full if you want to. There's also a tributes book for people to contribute their own um, tributes in the tributes book if they'd like to do that. Um, so you can read the full tributes from my um, father's extended family in, in, in the reception area. Um, but for now, um, I would just like to pick a, a few of the highlights um, and a few stories from, from their tributes, if that's okay. Um, so as you're all already aware, uh, my he moved from Nigeria to the UK um, in, the 90s, in the 1980s. Um, my father didn't have much growing up, um, and although he eventually moved away, he um, made sure that he continued to support um, his extended family in Nigeria in any way he could throughout his whole lifetime, um, basically. He, um, became so, he was the eldest um, um, boy in the family, and he, some, he became somewhat the, the patriarch of the family. Um, so um, the first story I'm going to um, tell is from my uncle Adiremi, um, who told the story of um, you know one time when there were kids at school, uh, and my father sacrificed himself basically for his brother. Um, what? Um, so what happened was that my uncle had done something, you know, misbehaved, done something wrong, and my father got a severe beating from the headmaster. This was Nigeria in the 1950s, so bear with me. Um, and. Um, 
So um, it was basically a simple case of mistaken identity. My uncle said that at the time, they were very similar in age. They looked very similar. So the headmaster was like, hey, you, you know, um, you know beat, beat my father. But my, my father never actually told that it was his brother that had done it. He just took the beating and kept quiet. So I think my brother used that as an example to say, you know, he was always looking out for him, always sacrificed himself for the family. Um, my uncle David said um, that my father lived an impactful life. He loved, his love and generosity to all, especially all of his siblings, widows, indigent students, the church, the extended family and the community around him can never be forgotten. My Aunt Grace said, Brother Brindley was an exceptional brother. He was unassuming, God-fearing and always ready to put smiles on agonized faces. During his lifetime, he touched on many lives, not only his nuclear and extended family members, but also among those who approached him for assistance. My uncle Gwinga said he was a very good and pleasant and caring person. It will be an understatement to say that he was good to a fault. He never neglected the request of anyone for help as much as he could. My aunt uh, Moyi, who's here today, um, and she's flown in from abroad to, to join us with her husband, said my father paid her school fees regularly and gave her extra pocket money as a child because he didn't want his siblings to suffer financially like he did growing up. And that was, you know, you know the duty that he felt um, towards his family and he just took care of them all his life. Um, my Aunt Abigail said, Dearest brother, I don't know how to describe the way you have been taking good care of me, my children and the Adegmiro family at large since our tender age. You've been a wonderful blessing to all of us. Um, so, um, like I said, there's, you know, many stories and, you know, tributes that you can read in the tributes area, but I'll just wrap it up now by just reading a quote from, um, my Aunt Grace on behalf of all the family, um, from the fathers, um, from all of my father's siblings. So she said, my dear brother, you have fought a good fight. You have finished your course. You have kept the faith. Rest on to resurrection day when we shall part no more. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, very much. We're now going to have a few moments of reflection and there'll be some images projected on the wall if you would like to use those to help you in your reflection and there'll be some music played at the same time. And then I will close our service with a final prayer at the end. But a few moments, quiet reflection.
Close with our final prayers. Father, we bid a loving farewell to Benley. We are profoundly glad that he lived. We cherish the memory of his words, deeds, and character. Carrying then in our hearts, let us now proceed in comfort and in peace, assured that even in this time of loss and sorrow, life remains precious and good. May we also on this day rekindle in our hearts an appreciation for the gift of life and other people around us. Let us honour the life of Benley by living ourselves more compassionately and loving in the days ahead. So here in this last act, in sorrow but without fear, in love and appreciation, we commit Benley's body to its natural end, assured that death does not have the final say, but for Benley, it is the doorway to eternal life in God's presence. As we return to the routines of our lives, go in love, and may the peace of God go with you all. Into your hands we commit Benley's spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. The family would like everyone who can to stay next door for refreshments in the lounge, and the coffin will remain in here until the crematorium, and that they'll be leaving to go to the crematorium in about an hour and a quarter's time. And it's just for the children, the crematorium, service so if you could please respect that so our final recessional music will be the yoruba version of hear my cry o lord and the family the english version 
of Hear My Cry, O Lord. And the family will lead out first, so then feel free to follow them and have refreshments next door. So it just remains for me to say thank you all so much for being part of our service today. It's been very much appreciated, all the words that have been shared, and we pray God's richest blessing on you all as you leave. Amen. Shelter